just in the past, fall back now. I mean, way back, the light disappear. I see through all of you, and it's so clear. And I'm so good, how you so whack? How you let this get away, you gon' regret that. Shorty so live, from the 215, and you was too late. Now I'm saying bye-bye. It's a shame. Welcome to Shepiphany Revelations from the Womb. I am EJ Nasila, and my lovely co host here is Miss Mysterious. Yes, Mysterious. <laughs> I like the way you said that. Mysterious. <laughs> well, we need to announce a few things. Um, our format is changing, so we're trying new things. We are now going to an hour for a while. An hour. An hour. So you better get in and catch us. <laughs> get in and catch us. We'll be on 8 to 9. And also, we will be playing our, our music throughout while we're talking very lowly. Um, so let us know what you think about the new format. Um, you can hit up, us up on Facebook, please. You can hit us up on Facebook. You can catch us on Twitter. You can catch us at home and feel school. Right? <laughs> Jumps. Jumps. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's my story. You can catch us. We ain't hard to find. <laughs> we are not hard to find. So, DJ EJ, and I, what do you guys think about that name for her? I think it's it's catchy. I like it. Plus, she's on the music. She's on the turntables. The ones and the twos. <laughs> the ones and the twos. Y'all didn't know I knew that rap lingo, <laughs> did you? I really don't. Thank you till you make it. Okay. Right. <laughs> I better stick to my day job. And as you can tell, the two of us are feeling really, really, really good this evening about this week's topic at she epiphany revelations from the, the womb. womb um we are talking about the angry black woman who we've all known one we've, we've probably we've all been, been one, one. <laughs> <laughs> and sadly some of us are raising some oh yeah so I thought this was a good time to jump in here and discuss this because it affects us all when we think about community. It affects all of us, you know. So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, first, we're going to get back to some situational music. We're going to start um, our second song, and um, we'll go from there. And we'll be talking. We'll be keeping, you know, keeping up. With the music, and for all of you who don't know, our situational music usually has something to do with our topic. So, hey, if you don't like it, tune in next week. I'll do better. <laughs> what we need to talk about, man? We need to talk about us. Yeah, girl, this What's is going uh, Shanti and her man. They have this discussion. Yeah, we need I to thought talk it would about. be good for the show for us to right. listen in on this. I've been so thinking. I'm going to mute our mics. Mm -hmm. so okay. I'm going to think I'm going to be able to forgive and forget all this shit you've been doing. This ain't working out. Yeah. You know, you've been thinking, you know, I, I've been thinking too, though, you know? You know what I've been thinking? I've been thinking the person that I got with ain't standing in front of me right now. Like, you done did a whole flip and changed on a nigga, man. Hell, yeah, well, guess what? You done changed, you know? All this shit you doing, you know, how you expect me to be the same person? I'm not the same person. Why? Because of the shit you've been doing. Man, so what the fuck you saying then, man? <laughs> what am I saying? Yeah, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> I'm saying it's over. Now that was a very, very adult content oh, track, yeah. but yeah. it so applies to what we got going on here at She Pit for Me tonight. Yeah. Can't you just, I mean, when you're hearing that, does it take your mind back to a place where you've been in one of those situations? Of course, one of, of those course. hostile situations? Yes, sometimes that was the hostile party. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. I was provoked. <laughs> and, and in 
my in my opinion, I think that a lot of our hostility comes from relationships oh, and yeah. the failure of these relationships or the miscommunication or just not being able to vibe with what's going on with our lovers. Yeah. You know, that that I think that's at the top of the list when it comes to black women. What do you think? Um, yes. I think uh, relationships make us angry. Um, especially when we don't have that communication factor in there. If you're, we're not able to communicate our thoughts properly, we're going to get angry. And, and what I find within my life, most men don't like to argue. And they walk away, so that makes us very angry. Because <laughs> we don't like to back on me. We do not like to be ignored. That's right. <laughs> and we like to get our points across. And if you allow us to get our points across, we won't be angry anymore. Exactly. exactly. That's just my philosophy. Exactly. But um, I think it's because of how we're raised and how our makeup is. You know, women are more emotional and vocal. Men are more laid back and, you know, really don't like confrontation when it comes to For one, nine times out of ten, they can't win it. Exactly. So... We like to hit with our words. Some men like to hit with their, with their hands. So. Well, this kind of brought me to the thought, the clear thought. Um, because, you know, with my mom being in the hospital, you know, um, I'm evaluating her care. You know, um, every interaction that she has with an employee of that hospital, I'm evaluating her care. Yeah. And it was so strange to see all of the clear nurses and how gingerly they dealt with her and how caring they seemed, how they just kind of were right there in her face. Is there anything I can do for you? Yes. Then I come one morning and we have a sister who's her nurse and she was just rough and abrupt. There was no finesse in the way she spoke with my mom and that kind of put me on a defense you know and it's sad to say and I, when I walk about I say I see why black men go to white women <laughs> and I've never felt that way yeah yeah but it's 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 clearly something different about us yeah. where do you think this difference comes from I think it comes from us way back in the day we was in the cotton fields you know we we were we were never Respected and revered. I mean, you know, our men try to respect and revere us, but we were just we were just taught to be hard and 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 you know you got to do what you got to do. So when it does come time for you to be sensitive, we don't know how to be sensitive. We we, we know how to take care of the kids, the home, um, the man, the way the best way that we've been taught how to take care of him. You know, we've never been taught how to really be in a relationship mm-hmm. and, 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 and a positive one, a nurturing one. Um, and we've lost a lot because <laughs> I made a comment the other day to my supervisor, and I said, you know what, I don't care what anybody says. That women's lib messed all of us women up. <laughs> it, it brought a lot of changes. It brought a lot of changes, some for the good, and those are the ones that they keep you know, in front of you and they're um, cheerleading for in the background, but no one really deals with the negative side of it. And I think anytime there's a change in our life, people, community, jobs, homes, there's you got to weigh it out yeah. because it's always going to have an upside as well as a downside. Wow. And speaking back to the situation that I just spoke of, I was so proud to see that sister come in yeah. there and be in a position that, that she's, she's in. in. Yes, yes, yes. But when you come in there and you're so rough and you're so hard, I'm, ooh, honey, I couldn't be her man. I probably would have bopped her upside the head a few <laughs> times. And I am so against any form of Not, domestic yeah. violence. You know, but it's like when you give off that type of aura about yourself, it's a repellent. Yeah. And it pushes people away from you. And it makes and, them very and, and defensive. Haven't you them. found this in customer service in the hood? <laughs> oh, Lord. You're just trying to get your iced tea. <laughs> and they didn't give you a Sprite. <laughs> Heavy ice. You just want your iced tea. And the woman at the, you know, at yep. the window, 
she got an attitude. Like she just went and walked to China, to, to, uh, walked out to China and handpicked the tea and walked it all the way back. <laughs> so she gonna take it out on you. That's true. But then you go out west and you treat it differently. Yes, you know. Right. So I agree with you when you say that um, a lot of it comes from way back then. And then keeping it 100. I don't know what the sister's life struggles are. Yeah. Because no matter where she's at in life, we still all have our struggles. And the struggle is real. Well, I also think that, you know, I, I, I can't defend bad behavior. You know, you're a nurse, you're, so that means you're very educated. Um, we hope. <laughs> yes, yeah, especially dealing with our moms. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's a lot of us. <laughs> but um, you, the first thing that that promotes being a doctor or a nurse or, or their practices is you have to have good customer service skills. Now, if you're having a bad day, then that break, or you take a break or you ask one of your, your, your coworkers to take over your shift or whatever you need to do, you can't bring that bad energy into people that are dying or sickly or whatever you know they need as much nurture and care as possible and that's what a hospital's there for exactly so maybe she might need to switch her job Honey, her job role if she can't switch her job i need her to switch her attitude i need her to, to do something to switch her attitude just it down a little bit yeah and but i i i, I really have to touch on this because a lot of our black men, they do go to start families and be in relationships and reach goals and find a level of acceptance with white women who are not treating them yeah. roughly, yeah. ignoring them, treating them as if they're the children. Um, <laughs> yes, we do do that. They kind of play their position. Yeah. But then you find us, the sisters, who we don't like it. Oh, yeah. We don't like it and we get angry about it. Yeah. You know, and so I'm like this. Wherever you find something that treats you good, I don't care if it's red, purple, yellow, orange, or green. Purple dot. Polka, Polka dot. dot. Right. <laughs> that's my favorite Whatever word. it is, and that's where you find it, and you become treated the way you feel you deserve to be treated, then... It's okay with me. I'm fine with it. To each his own. I know people who refuse to allow their children to date outside of their race. I felt that way because I promote the black family. But when my daughter did choose to date outside her race, I didn't, you know, come between it, any of that. You know, that's her choice. You know, um, I feel that as parents... We're here to guide our children. You know, we might not like everything they do or what they may become, but once they hit that age of they're, they're an adult, there's nothing really much you can say about it. You That's know, you, you can make suggestions. Now, if I'm still paying for your college education, I can make a lot of suggestions. <laughs> I, you know, but when That's it comes true. to her, her personal relationship, that's to me that's none of my business as long as she's being treated right and and she's treating that man right so you know that she has to make her mistakes just like my son they have to in order for them to figure out what they want and who they want to be with what type of man or woman they want they have to experience things so if we as parents block that then how can your child grow well taking into account to what you but she said, is an angry black woman Taking into account what you just stated, as well as what I just said, we may have lost our sisterhood cards. Oh, that's fine. Because, you know, there's a lot of sisters, the angry black women, who don't feel that way. Well, I mean, to each his own, you and, know. and they take it more as it's a put down to the black woman. I feel that, honestly, if a Caucasian or, or a Latino man or... Chinese man, whatever man came into my life and was treating me very well, treating my children very well, and I'm not mean monetary, I mean just just really bringing love and understanding and helping me become a better person. Um, they will just have to be mad at me because I'm gonna follow. I'm gonna follow my heart and happiness. So you know, now I do love my brothers. 
But y'all need to step it up. <laughs> so that's all I can say. And when, when I hear the argument about um, why are all these queer women taking our black men? First of all, you cannot rape the willing. Thank you. Second of all, to feel that way, and this is just my personal thought, to feel that way says that something inside of you feels negative about your own self. Yeah. Because if something belongs to me and is mine, no one can take it. That's right. You know, and I think the, the topic of the angry black woman is something we really do need to look at as a sisterhood. We need to address this. We are angry. We are hostile. We are harsh. We're rude. We're even rude to one another. Oh, yes. You know, yes. It, it's so much um, going on with inside of our own selves, but we never discuss it. We don't talk about it. We camouflage it. We cover it up. We smile. Hey, girl. You know, like on Friday. Oh, yeah. Miss Parker was speaking to yeah. uh, um, It wasn't Smokey. Uh-huh. Um, Ice Cube. We're going to call him Ice Cube. We're speaking to the Ice Cube mom. She like, hey, hey. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's what we do. Yes, we do so do that. So how tight really is our, our sisterhood? And then that takes us to that clickish behavior. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and within that cliquish behavior, there is a strong sense of separatism. Yeah. How close and how tight can our sisterhood be if we have that type of behavior or mentality? Um, well, I think uh, sisterhood is, is, is very complex for me. Um, All right, turn this up a little bit, EJ. EJ. Oh, go ahead. Um, hey. We seem to we seem to be very catty with each other and fake and she thinks she all that because she got those new shoes or right. you know and my philosophy is this there's nothing out there that another woman has that if I wanted I couldn't get on my own and get not your man but if I wanted a man I could go out and get one now, if I liked your pair of shoes, I'm not going to sit and talk about the shoes. I'm be like, girl, them shoes is bad. Where you getting them from? I'm going to get them here. Right, exactly. <laughs> you, know, you could call me a biter, hater, whatever, but I'm like, them shoes look nice, especially if they're reasonable. Exactly. But we just seem to be catty, and I don't think we know how. Some of us really don't know how to be friends with each other. I, I, I don't think some of us ever got that they gonna hate social they're gonna hate me but they're gonna hate me they're gonna hate me anyway even when we came together here at 69 a.m to kind of have a meet and greet of sorts to get to know one another you had some that were like really really cool then you had some mm, face toe up for what yeah what is the problem what is the issue and and how do you have an issue with someone that just said Hello, how are you doing? Right. And we're here to do the same thing. So how effective can we be? But you can lead a horse to water, you can't make a drink. I, am, I won't even spend no more time with that. But, but, that, but I want to understand, I mean, and not just here, but that's everywhere. Mm -hmm. You get a group of women together, and like you said, it does become cliquish. And people whispering, and this, that, and instead of, it's like we're territorial. And instead of inviting that woman in, and into the sisterhood, we got a uh, exactly. girl, exactly. look at her, and this, that, and the other. But instead of welcoming a new sister and learning something and, 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 and accepting and embracing what this new person can bring to the group, we want to tear her down and, and, and send her out with a tail between the legs and beat it, don't ever come back. So I want to understand why do we do that, even when as successful as you are. There are still people that are mad at you because you're on the radio. But instead of the, and you invite everybody to come on, I come do, on in. But instead of coming on and, and, and maybe getting their own radio slot, exactly. they want to talk about you behind your back. Right, or they want to right. talk about, oh, she the one that got all this and that. And, and I don't right, mean, right. you know, all these kids and this, right. that, and the other. And, uh, okay, so what? Because you're mad because this woman's not speaking bad of, of you. Right. Only thing she says is God bless you. Right. And right. if there's anything I can help you with, I'll be more. Even people, I even sometimes look like you know what you just said. 
and you like Nita, it's okay. Right. <laughs> you know, it it's okay. It's always okay. And but why is it when, as women, we see someone, and, and like you said, it's self. You see someone that you feel is doing better than you. You want to destroy that person and bring them down to where you feel that you're at. Exactly. Instead of g- grabbing hold of that person and asking, hey, how did you do that? Can you help me? And, and, and we, we always want to bring somebody down to our level instead of lifting ourselves up to theirs. And that is so true. And the sad part of it is... When you have those type of personal issues inside of yourself when it comes to your sister and you can't give her props for a steam or salute to her or even support her, that issue is not hers, it's yours. Yeah. That's your issue. And that tells the telltale story that this is how you have lived your whole entire life. And then it's funny. We just can't be a hater by ourselves. We got to pull everybody in. Exactly. And the one that really irritates me is the one, the, the sister, that don't have anything to do with it. Don't even know the situation. Just the and just come on in. Yeah, I'm sick of this and I'm sick of that. Going but along for the you, ride. You don't even know. You're just, you just mad because cause you associated. <laughs> you're just, you just mad. You don't even, why are you mad? <laughs> so. One thing I, I can say about myself is, I believe in supporting the vision. Oh, yeah. And that doesn't have to be my vision. I'm going to support your vision, your vision, and your vision. I'm going to do it because I know what it, I know that the strength in me was given to me yeah. to push out yeah. out of the womb. Yeah. First to us, then through us. That's and right. I'm, I, I have energy here that I'm willing to push out to the next sister, to the last sister. To the sister next to that sister that's what it's about so you're not going to always have people be on that positive bandwagon yeah, everyone yeah. doesn't want to be happy oh no and everyone do they just don't want to get them i'm gonna I'm market some shirts that say <laughs> miserable and looking for company right, exactly. and i'm gonna give them out for exactly. christmas exactly. watch out facebook you might get one <laughs> exactly so at this time we're gonna let the music play and we're gonna come back. We'll be right back with you in just a second. Stay tuned to She Epiphany at 1690 AM. The one. <laughs>
You're with Mysterious and EJ Nasida on 1690 AM, the one. She epiphany, revelations from the womb. Oh, you sounded so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded very maternal. <laughs> revelations from the womb. Revelations. <laughs> Girl, what they know about this womb stuff, though? I don't know. What do you guys know? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, what do you think? Is, what do you think they think? Um, I don't know, Rashetta. Oh, I'm sorry, mysterious. It's okay. I'm both. Yes, you are. Yes, I am. Um, you tell us. You caught me off guard with that one. <laughs> when they hear the word from the womb, they automatically assume it's a group of pregnant women. I <laughs> am the one that have a show. And they are so wrong. So, so off track. Because like I've told you before, you do not have to have a womb, literally. Yes. But male or female, you do have that place that is deep inside of you where things begin yeah. and they originate. And through your hard work, energy, effort, articulation, uh, whatever it is, you bring those things forth. You birth them. You birth them into the universe. So... EJ, DJ EJ Nasiba <laughs> has just, something that she wants to share with us. So I'm going to let her get to her part. Do your, do your thing. Do your thing. Well, today, um, my co-host, Mysterious, <laughs> <laughs> she did some research on uh, anger. And she came up with four stages of anger. And one is the buildup of anger, the spark, explosion, in the aftermath so let's discuss the build-up of anger what what examples can you give us because this was your research um that um could build up mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. me being an angry black woman the build-up it could be i just woke up <laughs> i'm just kidding could be a number of things that okay. kind of start uh turning your energy for the negative Okay. It could be a slow turn, a gradual turn. It can be a quick, sharp turn. <laughs> you know, like the quick, sharp turns that mama, you know, it was yep. just one thing yep. and you were going. Oh, yeah. She was on you like white on rice. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, could, it could be things that have taken place over a lifetime okay. from childhood. A lot of us angry black women, we're still carrying ghosts. Oh yeah, yeah. You know those things that are no longer there, but they're they're real in our imagination and within our hearts. emotional yeah. place of our hearts. You know, so that would be the build up, um, the beginning stages of that turn okay. of your emotions. So the next one was spark. So how do we from build up get to spark? I'm the, thinking like a lighter spark. Right. Spark. The spark would be that instance that totally ignites it, okay? Like you've been carrying the fuse for a long time okay. and the wick has gotten short. <laughs> and all you need is one more thing to spark it. And it's and on. Set it ablaze. And that's the dangerous stage. The, here comes the explosion. Right. And, you know, there are some people out there that keep sparking and keep sparking and keep sparking. They're sparking everywhere they go and everywhere they turn. Yeah. It doesn't matter what type of relationship it is, friendship, parenthood, on the job, at the market, at Chubbs, uh, anywhere. It doesn't matter. Anytime they come in contact with people, just that alone sparks that anger. And then the aftermath. What would aftermath, will they be like apologetic, apologetic or do they even care? Or? The aftermath is where the damage has been done. Done, okay. The damage, I mean, you've acted out. You didn't flipped out. You Showed didn't your tail. Tires, you didn't keyed a car. You didn't pulled out somebody's weed. You know what I'm saying? You didn't, you didn't slap the child too hard. Oh, or, yeah. You know, that's the aftermath. Okay. Now where you're left to reflect on your actions. Consequences. Consequences. So, as women, black women, how do we avoid going through these stages? When we, when, 
when we feel ourselves building up, like, you know, let's do a situation where your your, your kids are, keep telling them, do your chores, do your chores, and they want to fight and keep fussing and picking at each other. And, and, and as a mother, you know, that's my build up. Like, look, do your chores. Mm-hmm. Well, he's not doing his or she's not doing hers. And that's my pet peeve. You worry about yourself. I'll get to that other person, but right now I'm talking to you. So how do we stop that build up to going to the aftermath? How do we control our behaviors? What we have to do is first identify that, yes, I have an anger issue. Mm -hmm. Because too many times (laughs) you can ask this typical black woman, how you doing? I'm fine. Oh, yeah. That's the denial. <laughs> and it's not just a river in Egypt. Come on, <laughs> Say <girl>. that. <laughs> so you have to admit that there's a problem. And once you admit that you have an issue, you can start to look for sources yep. in the community, within your church, from friends. I mean, all of us know somebody that's well-connected. Yes. You know, yeah. and if not, hey. Mysterious or DJ EJ Nasila, we'd be glad to help you find those resources. But you have to take the initiative within yourself to get up and do something about it. Don't just accept it yeah. and allow it to, to be a part of your personality because it's ugly. Yeah. It's yeah. ugly. And um, we don't deserve to receive that part of you. Yes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the thing about anger. It spills out wherever you allow it to spill. Yeah. So that could be in church. You know, that could be with your child's teacher. That could be in a romantic relationship with your neighbors, the traffic cop on Lake Street. I mean, it could be wherever you allow it to happen. Yeah. So you've got to admit that you have an issue. Then get up, look for resources. Action, take action. you need to learn the skills. Because is our life ever going to be free of obstacles? No. Never. Every day you wake up, there's a new obstacle waiting on you. Um, So we have to learn the skills. And as women, we're so talented, and we juggle so much, and we do so much. And so many people expect our time and our energy. But within that, sometimes that can be a combustion of sorts with inside of us on a personal that people don't even know about. So we have to take action yep. and seek help. we got to look for help. Someone, because there are skills to help you get from point A to point B. Now, will you have times where you stumble? Of course, because the things about skills, you have to continue to do them over and over, over and over, over until you become better at that skill. Yeah, because a lot of people don't realize your bad behaviors didn't just happen overnight. Mm-hmm. It took time to do that, so it's going to take time for you to reprogram exactly. your thought process and how you deal with things. Now, another question I have for you is, I don't think you're an angry woman. I, I have my times. Okay. Well, like we all, but, you know, just walk around just angry all no, the time. No, 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 no. So how should the non-angry woman who has it together deal with the angry black woman? and when i say run not in fear but in wisdom and knowledge misery loves company and the angry woman is looking to draw anybody within her space because it's more of a power control thing oh yeah yeah and if your life isn't jacked up don't you dare allow someone to jack it up. That's right. That's right. Do what you have to do for you. That's right. You matter. You're important. And you should never allow someone to manipulate your happiness. That's true. So when I say run, <laughs> yeah, I meant that run because we don't have time for that. Nobody has time for the negative, you know, the weightiness or the burdens or the troubles, you know. Now, if you want to do something about it, then we're here for you. Yeah. But if you want to just toy with it and play with it and just talk about it in conversation because it feels good rolling off your tongue, you don't have to worry about me. I'm not, and you don't even have to leave. 
Most of you like, would you just get out of here? No, <laughs> you ain't got to go nowhere. Because as long as these feet work, <laughs> I'll leave. I am gone. And she will. <laughs> She's being serious. Like they used to say we and be like, come on, let's go. Like they used to say we were little, shoot, I'll be booking. <laughs> <laughs> I get away from that. Yes, because as, as you mature, you'll find that you're going to, the more you elevate within your life, and the more you walk on that path I've always, I keep speaking about, you're going to have a lot of angry black women, and you know, after you. So, and you're going to have to learn how to walk away and go. It's not that you're being, a, as they say, a punk or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's just that you're, you, you don't have time. You're doing what's best Good for, for you. you. So, so um, and it's just sad. Because the angry black woman, if she's the head of the household, you gotta take she's it home, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But a lot of black, but but a lot, <laughs> a lot of angry black women don't realize. Some might not realize they're angry. They're so used to being, and 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 you know, like you said, it, it's generational. You know, so they're they This is normal for them. You know, I've gone in some households when it's normal for the kids. To cuss the parent out, and I'm looking like, oh my, where's the belt? Where's the belt? Um, I've gone into households where, you know, and I'm talking about little kids, 13, 14, you know, just, you know, they t the mom telling them, you know, it's time for you to go to bed or get, you go to bed, you go to bed, you do, and, and then I'm like, you, you really going to bed? <laughs> you know? Okay, so it, what, what if they don't realize? They're angry, or or you, the mom is cussing at the kids, and the kids is cussing at the mom or the dad. You know, I'm, I don't mean to, you know, just leave the fathers out, but you know what? And these usually are single mother households, to be honest. Um, wh wh what about that person that really doesn't know they have an anger problem because this is all they know. This is all they they know. Grandma act like this. Auntie act like this. Uh, I watched the whole family cuss cuss people out. Then the daughter ran up in the house and 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 pulled out the you know she was trying to fight another woman's child, and the daughter ran in the house, pulled the mama out. How, how you, you pull somebody out their house, a woman that's older than you, and you you fighting this woman, and your mom and grandma and aunties and I mean general cousins all that. Laughing and, and I was the one that said, you better stop that. <laughs> you know, you better stop that. And what's wrong with y'all? Just stop that. Stop hitting that woman. So, we, 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 you know, and, and for me, that child that did that, I'm pretty sure knew they was doing something wrong because you don't do that. But when you have your, your the people that are supposed to be there to teach you right and wrong, cheering you on. So, realistically, how do you know you're doing something bad? Or angry. <laughs> yeah. But I also, I mean, I agree, but, I have to say but, but if, 
Yo mom. Yo grandma. Yo auntie. Yo cousins. That's a strong institution. Uh, you know, or egging you on no one. A neighbor that lived a block away because one of my kids came and told me. I was minding my business in my house. I was like, oh, no, we don't do a block away. They lived on the next block. And I'm like, no, you, you, what is wrong? This is not even normal behavior. You know, and I was just like, you know, and, and for me, it comes from, you know, parents not having that line. And, and we want to be our child's friend instead of their parents. And to me, that, that 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 we have a dysfunctional family there. Your child, your child is dysfunctional, and that same child, Lord forgive me, caught herself coming to my house one day. And that's oh, she was gonna whoop my son Ooh. over a cell phone. But as the kids say, she got teed. Right, right, right. Cause I don't play. Exactly. And I'm with no kids. Oh no, and I'm the one in the neighborhood. I've heard them. Hey, that's that crazy one. Don't mess with her. <laughs> so I've turned into my mother, the crazy one. But I don't play. Isn't it strange how things that are bad are praised? Oh yes. And then the things or the persons who are standing for something powerful and right. Are the crazy? Oh yeah, yeah. Isn't that ironic? Yeah. Like, remember? I think it was was the last week or the week before. We was talking about uh, when uh, Rashid was talking about. It's profound how when a person, um, when when you all fail and everybody revels in that failure, but when one person said, "No, I passed that that class," everybody's like, "Oh, uh, uh. you know." But no one's excited because you passed. You know, but everybody's excited because we feel. Oh, girl, we feel. Yeah. But if you come and say, I got to act, oh, she thinks she's smart. <laughs> exactly. 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 So I think some of, um, I would like us to touch on some of the things that make us an angry black woman. Like I said, it starts in childhood. Um, because either skills weren't taught. Yeah. Of how to deal with yourself emotionally, how to carry yourself socially, you know, or maybe you've never had a godlike experience yeah. in your life that teaches you morals, yeah. you know, or good wisdom and good sound teaching. And how to behave, you know, how to behave, yeah, how to carry yourself. Yeah, because, it, I mean, we as black women, we, 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 we're, we, we have a lot of dignity, a lot of, a lot of, just, we just, we the bomb, right. but we want to be, as they say, a video vixen. We want to idolize that, but we'll idolize the Oprahs and all that because she's giving stuff away. She's on TV. But why do you really idolize Oprah? Right. That that you know that that's the one that started off from nothing, like most of our beginnings, mm -hmm. and built herself up to be Oprah. Well, do you think that even her being Oprah has played the role of the angry black woman? I'm sure. I would say so because she's as time a, has gone on, she's found the courage to come and speak yes, out about her yeah, drug use. Yeah. And you can be quiet as a church house mouse, but if you are abusing anything, that's a form of anger. You just turn it inward. Yeah. You know, so you turn it with inside of yourself. Maybe you're not the type to go out and cuss loud in the streets or knock somebody down. Maybe your anger is inward. Because you can see her rebirth mm -hmm. from where her show used to be. It used to be like Jerry Springer. Exactly. And then you can see one day she was like, no. She took her power and she revamped it. it. Yep. And she used it for a far better outreach than just that. Yeah, those fights, you, see, you know, we always... It was entertainment. In and watch the, the but it's funny now. I don't even. I don't even like Jerry Springer anymore. And it's still on. Yeah, but I, that might be because we were grown up. up. But I remember I didn't miss an episode. <laughs> I remember when I was on book of tickets. I didn't see it. Oh, I got to see this show. Yes. But I was also in my early twenties. Yeah, that's so, true. So <laughs> go figure. Another thing um, that can contribute to the angry black woman 
is finances. Yeah. That's a huge frustration in our community. Well, that's true. Um, But I think you can't be angry. Like for me, I have to use myself. Um, Welfare recipient could make the the bill the ends meet so i had to take a hit and actually you know i had got a job and all that but it, i wasn't being fulfilled and mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. still weren't meeting so it was like oh my goodness what can i do so i knew for me i had a epiphany hey. that i need to go to school and whatever i had to do she had a she epiphany <laughs> <laughs> So whatever I had to do for for me and my children to be successful, I was going to have to take that loss. And that's what I couldn't be angry at the world anymore. I couldn't be angry at this my situation, the situation that I chose to be in. Um, I couldn't be angry at the fathers. I couldn't be angry at the world. Nobody. I had to, to that. I can only be mad at myself because that the, because of the choices that I made. So, but when you were going angry, through that, yeah, I was I'm very sure frustrated. You justified. And and well, you know, hold on, hold, hold that thought, hold that thought. I'm gonna read Kubler Ross's five stages of anger. First one is <laughs> denial, which we spoke about. Yep. The second one is the anger. The denial stage is, I feel fine, like we spoke of. The anger stage, why me? Yep. I've been there. Yeah, I've then been there. Then the bargaining stage, negotiating with reality, yep. you know. And then is the depression sets in. Um, why even bother? Why yep. try to change things? It's never going to get better. Oh, that's well, I know, love that sucker you. excuse. Whew. And then the last, this stage is the most important of all because once you reach this number five stage, things have begun to turn around, and that's acceptance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I've been in those same situations with the, the my children's father, mm-hmm. um, education wise. Mm-hmm. I didn't do what I was supposed to do with that. Had to go back and start that all over again. Me too. Housing oh, was yeah. another frustration because you only have a certain amount of money, which oh, means yeah. you only can live on 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th, 20th through, through 30. You know what I'm saying? And that's a frustration because those are high crime areas. Yeah. Or used to be, so to speak. Um, so my love life isn't working. Bills are piling up. I'm not. I'm only educated enough to food. go push a mop or a broom. Yeah. Um, then it's it's, it's a, so many things that build up. Then you're looking for someone to blame. Mm-hmm. It's your fault if it wasn't for you. Then we go all the way back to childhood. Like I said, yeah. if my mother would have did, oh yeah, or if my father would have been there, we can't blame these people. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. have to tackle this mad angry woman syndrome head on and be honest and make some changes and it starts you know it starts with you like i said you know it started with me i couldn't look outside of my household and blame everybody because of the choices and 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 the choices that i made you know and and that self and we all want to place blame on everyone else Because of the choices we made. And whether, you know, I love all my children. I love them dearly. But I was warned. Mm -hmm. You know, when I didn't have. And and I could see other people around me having babies. And I, you know, it didn't ever click. I was like, whatever. That'll never happen to me. You know, and it bam. So, and it's crazy. I'm the one with five. (laughs) Everybody else stopped at one or two. So, you know, you got to stop blaming everyone else and look within yourself stand in the mirror and look at yourself in the mirror and what choices you made that put you in the circumstances that you in and then find some resources like mr said you can always contact one of us um because i i I got a book of resources so Mm -hmm, don't mm -hmm. don't ever think that we're just giving out advice and not backing it up you know but the first step you need to be able to look at look look within yourself and acknowledge that these were the choices you made, and these choices can be fixed so you can have a better life. 
Let me just tell this very, very short story. This summer, I was um, at an event with a group of ladies, and I consider them sisters. And it, and it's so funny how you can have sisters within your circle, mm-hmm. and you never really know the extent of their demons. Mm. And um, we're talking to these gentlemen. You know, these gentlemen are um, having conversations with us. And the one guy offered something to the lady, and she, no, thank you. <laughs> I don't know you. What are you asking me? That? And he's like, hey, no, thank you. It's fine. <laughs> you know? And now this is also someone who's always <laughs> complaining that she doesn't have a mate. Oh, okay. You know, or she's really down on herself or she's trying this, she's trying that, she's trying this, she's trying that. Why don't you start with your attitude? Yes. Why don't you start with your outlook on life in general? And whatever your baggage is, that's your baggage. But you can't make everybody pay for that. That's right. You know, because we all have been through situations, and we all have a story. So I'm going to need you to back it up and calm down. And just like I did in, I don't mind walking away. Just because we're cool. I does not mean I think like you. That's right. You know, it doesn't mean I behave like you, nor would I ever carry myself that way. No. So sometimes you just got to know how to get along with people. It's so simple. And, 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 and just because a man offers you something doesn't mean he wants you, ladies. <laughs> you know, the, the, he could just be here, you know. <laughs> you know, stop that. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> so I'm sorry. <coughs> oh, <wait. laughs> yeah, that should be our next topic <sighs> just because a man offers you something doesn't mean he won't you. actually our next topic is going to deal with women's health okay and we're going to do a series on okay. women's health um because i think it's very important paying attention to um the theme within our own atmosphere and health is a big one so that's going to be one of the things that um one of the things that we will be discussing here in the near future okay. as Epiphany, because we want to get this information out. out. And we got quite a few things coming that we are in the planning stages. Yes. Right. Yes. Now, and yes. they are positive. They are great. They are going to be things for the entire community. community. Yeah. So we're really looking forward to that. And I'm really liking the way She Piffney is making its mark, doing its thing. Um, not a lot of bells or whistles or booty shorts or, you know, what have you. <laughs> yeah. But we're here and we just want to have the conversation. That's what it's about. What you got to say, EJ? Give your shots out as we're on our way out the door, girl. Well, I want to... Um Send my condolences to the Franklin family. Yes. Um, my cousin's mother passed away, and um, I want to pray for um, Mrs. Haddock, Miss Dearest's mom. Um, I also want to pray for uh, the Cotton family. They just lost, or the Cotton just lost her sister, so that's my stepmom. Okay. But I also want to give a beautiful shout out to my cousin Thelma, who is the eldest Allison in our family, who turned 92. 92 Get it, girl. on September 2nd. So, love you guys. That's beautiful, the gift of longevity. You don't see that a lot anymore. That's awesome. Well, I want to send shout out to all of She Piffany's listeners and supporters. Thank you. I love you. And I thank you for making us your Wednesday's choice. And we have a want keep. Stay in tune, sorry, because we have so much, so much planned, so many special guests. A lot of uh, community uh, leaders coming to the show, so please keep watching. And these events that we have coming up, if you plan on punching somebody's lights out, don't do it. Or making a sour face because people are successful and moving forward, you have just been uninvited. (laughs) Yes. She pivoted about that. We want to turn on the light for our community. So thank you for tuning in. See you next Wednesday, same time. Same place for love. Good night. You don't even know my name. Woo! Sixteen ninety. The one.
I'm a pain on the floor. I'm magnificent. I'm the one. I'm the magnificent. Say what? Say what? I'm the magnificent. Say what? Say what? I'm your sunshine and your rain. My heart it doesn't tire. My love remains. Why you can't see me? Why you blind? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yo, I'm the magnificent with the sensational style. Yes. Check your head to toe. Don't forget the smile. Bless. If you were smart, you would try to snatch it up. Moving like a snail. When you gon' catch it up? Huh? You on it 'cause I'm bored, laughing 'cause you just a clown now. Ain't worthy of the queen. Pop and bow down. Really bow out. How does that sound? Had a chance in the past. Fall back now. I mean way back. The light disappeared. I see through all of you, and it's so clear. And I'm so good. How you so whack? How you let this get away? You gon' regret that. Shorty so live from the 215, and you was too late. Now I'm saying bye. Shame. It's a shame, and it's a shame. You're missing out on me.